As we begin our course on nurture and discipleship, it's important to define discipleship. By definition, a disciple is a follower, one who accepts and assists in spreading the doctrines of another. A Christian disciple, then, is a person who accepts and assists in the spreading of the good news of Jesus Christ. Discipleship is the process by which disciples grow in the Lord Jesus Christ and are equipped by the Holy Spirit who resides in our hearts to overcome the pressures and trials of this present life and become more and more like Christ. This process requires believers to respond to the Holy Spirit's prompting to examine their thoughts, words, and actions and compare them with the Word of God. This requires the disciple to be in the Word daily studying it, praying over it, and obeying it. In addition, we should always be ready to give testimony of the reason for the hope that is within us, and to assist others to walk in His way. In 1 Peter 3.15 we read, But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. According to Scripture, being a Christian disciple involves personal growth characterized by the following. Putting Jesus first in all things. We see this in Mark 8, 34 through 38. You may pause the lecture to look up this passage in your Bible. The disciple needs to be set apart from the world. Our focus should be on our Lord and pleasing Him in every area of our lives. We must put off self-centeredness and put on Christ-centeredness. Second, we must follow Jesus' teachings. We must be obedient children and doers of the Word. Obedience is the supreme test of faith in God, and Jesus is the perfect example of obedience as He lived a life on earth of perfect obedience to the Father, even to the point of death. The third characteristic of a disciple is fruitfulness. Take a moment to read John 15, 5 through 8. Our job is not producing fruit. Our job is to abide in Christ, and if we do, the Holy Spirit will produce fruit, and this fruit is the result of our obedience. As we become more obedient to the Lord and learn to walk in His ways, our lives will change. The biggest change will take place in our hearts, and the overflow of this will be new conduct thoughts, words, and actions representative of that change. The change we seek is done from the inside out through the power of the Holy Spirit. It isn't something we can conjure up on our own. Love for Other Disciples We see this in John 13, 34, and 35. We are told that love of other believers is the evidence of our being a member of God's family. Love is defined and elaborated on in 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 13. These verses show us that love is not an emotion, but an action. We must be doing something and involved in the process. Furthermore, we are told to think more highly of others than ourselves and to look out for their interests. Philippians 2, verse 5 speaks of how our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. What a perfect example He is of everything we are to do in our Christian walk. Finally, evangelism characterizes the Christian disciple. Matthew 28, 18-20 commands us to go out and make disciples. We are to share our faith and tell non-believers about the changes Jesus Christ has made in our lives. No matter what our maturity level in the Christian life, we have something to offer. Too often we believe the lie from Satan that we don't really know enough or haven't been a Christian long enough to make a difference. Not true. Some of the most enthusiastic representatives of the Christian life are new believers who have just discovered the awesome love of God. They may not know a lot of Bible verses or theology, but they have experienced the love of the living God, and that is exactly what we are to share.